the big question is how does it feel to be a writer? Now, those that write like myself, um, I was not born a writer. They weren't born writers. I started reading when I was a kid. I was in the um, um, uh, young people's art, um, art theater. I was I acted a lot of plays for nine years, 10, 11, 12 hours. And then, in fact, I read so many books. I was influenced because in my house, at the period when I was small, there was a library. And in that you have um, Sherlock Holmes, you have um, James Harley Chase, Agatha Christie and so on. And <clears throat> in those days, we don't have tele uh, uh, television. Uh, now you have a smartphone, you have so many distractions. In fact, in the evenings, in late in the night, when the insects are, you know, um, making noise and so on, it's dark. There's nothing you can do in the evening than to read. And then your book falls off from your hand and then you sleep off. So that was the period. But now things have changed because of the new information technologies and so on, and all the gadgets around that disturb people from reading. But still people are reading, people are reading. In my school, I'm a high school teacher at the same time. I have seen students, uh, A-level students, who are um, um, uh, with books. I was surprised anyway, because uh, young people, they don't normally read now, but um, those, is especially girls, I saw them with big book, you know, big books of about 200 pages that they were reading. And even in the train when I'm in Paris, I see some people reading. Yeah, because reading is very nice and it helps you to write. So they worked hard to learn the craft. Yes, this is what I'm doing now, trying to teach you the craft. Like many of us, their first few drafts are often sloppy. Yes, the first time you write, uh, your first draft, you might not like it, but I do tell people now, be very careful with your first draft because the first draft at times might be the best. The best way you will know if the first draft is good, when you finish writing or typing now, because type on, on the screen, leave it for about five days or one week and go back to it. You, 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 you'll be wondering, did I write this? Is it me that wrote this uh, piece? So trust yourself. You are wonderful. Writing is rewriting, yes, because at times um, there's a book I'm writing now, Breakaway, it's about myself and uh, poverty and so on. Now, I have written the first draft. It looks very, very good. So each time I want to continue with the next chapter, I have to read everything again to control what I've done. And uh, what I see is that, oh, there's something missing here. So I have to add again and add and, and, and So this is what is the rewriting. There are some other sentences you might want to take away and so on, but be very, very careful. Do not censor yourself too much because the first draft or the first drafts are always the best. But what I can say is writing is rewriting means you can add more to what you have written. You can do something like um, adding synonyms, you know, avoid repetitions and so on because it's very boring for the, uh, for the reader. Despite the disappointments, they don't give up. Never you give up. Never, never you give up. Because if you are, um, in, in my own case, you cannot give up when you love something. I love reading, I love writing. And then um, it's just like, I'm on holiday somewhere when I, pick up, when, when I pick up a book that talks about a journey or talks about a place. Now you are in your house, you are reading that chapter, you are no more there. It takes you down, it carries you down maybe to New York uh, where you see the characters moving, except somebody you say, oh, it's time for lunch. And they say, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I'll be there in just uh, two minutes. You see what books can do. And then after reading, you, you would like to reproduce 
you would like to reproduce also what uh, the other writers are teaching you because they are your tutors. You don't see them, but you are enjoying their books and that will encourage you to write. Here, they are on a constant journey to learn and improvise. Yes, nobody has got all the keys. Nobody has got the solution. So the point is continue, try, try, try again. And on that, const uh, on that constant journey is what we say is you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent in whatever you are doing. Do it every day, every day, every day. And then you see, you will come to a successful um, conclusion. They keep a notebook to capture interesting thoughts, ideas, and dreams. I've just said it um, when I started this uh, lecture. Yeah, you can do it in so many ways. Either you keep a notebook. Um, the modern way now is uh, you have your telephone, you can record yourself, you know, and then transcribe after. It, any method that works for you, but make sure you don't allow any idea to fly away. Because at times you have wonderful ideas before you write it down or record yourself, you've forgotten it, it's gone. And this is the multi-million idea you lost in one second or a wonderful book you lost. So that's why you have to be very authentic, um, um, uh, um, attentive to to the silent voice talking to you. You know, the voice tells you, and not only the voice, you hear so many uh, sentences coming or story coming. And uh, a good number of friends, uh, of my friends, writers do tell me, I wake up in the middle of the night and start scribbling. And then they go back to sleep. It could be a dream, a nice dream that can turn into a book. So it's very, very important. I think the, the, the idea is the capital, is the first thing when you have a good idea of a story, oh my God, you have to, you will tell the story in a very wonderful way. Now, they are flexible about changing the direction of their work. Yes, you can change the direction of your work. If you think, um, you can write two or three books at the same time or the one you are, that you are writing, if you feel you are not satisfied, bring out other drafts. But my experience is personally is unique to me. The first draft looks better than second and third. And because if you start turning it around before you know it, uh, you must have diminished your work and it does not make any sense anymore. They observe the world around them deeply. Yes, like uh, when I was in the seminary, I wanted to be a priest. A uh, father director used to tell us, he said, you are for the world, but you are not in the world. So we are observers, just like Charles Dickens during the um, Industrial Revolution was on the other side of the Industrial Revolution. That is um, the disadvantages of the Industrial Revolution that uh, made him uh, write uh, Oliver Twist. You know, in the workhouse, kids were working, child labor and so on. While, while the other side, um, you see progress in England, for example, the trains and uh, the new houses, uh, so many things, people left the rural area to the urban area, it was civilization, but Charles Dickens did not say it that way. So, we are observers, including people around you. And during the uh, period of Charles Dickens was the social class were created. You see, you have the bourgeoisie, you have the middle class, you have the paupers and so on and so forth. Their characters and behaviors, you study people. You study people, look at them, look at their eyes, look at what they are saying and bring them inside your book, to your book, use them. They will never know because it, 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 it has nothing to do, do with copyright because they don't know what they're doing. They don't even know that you have um, taken a chunk of their characters and their personalities into your novel, just like a painter painting somebody moving around. You are a painter, 
but the difference is that you write things down. Now, they get in the shoes of others to see their point of view. Yes, at times you have to get into their shoes, what they must be feeling and why they react the way they do. 